In this video, I'll give a detailed description of the player panel. Import the prepared material, select all, click on open. When we select the material here, it will automatically preview the clip in the player panel. First look at the top left corner of the player panel. There is a previewing. It also shows that the type of clip that is currently being previewed is a video. In the lower left corner, there are two timecodes. The timecode on the left represents the current time. It will keep changing as the video plays. The timecode on the right represents the total duration of the clip. This is the play button. If we click on it, it will play. Click it again and it will pause. At the same time, we can also use the space bar on the keyboard, which is usually the biggest key on the keyboard. Press the space bar and the video will play. Press the space bar again and the video will pause. There is a magnifying glass icon here. It is an area in the preview screen that zooms in and out of the video, it just helps us to preview the video better, and it doesn't modify the size of the video. To the right of the magnifying glass icon, there is a full screen button. Click on this button. The window is now full screen. What are the benefits of having a full screen window? One advantage is that we can preview the video easily. Another advantage is that there is a timeline. We can drag this timeline for a quick preview. After the preview is complete, we can click the shrink button. To restore the size of the preview window. We can also use the shortcut keys to preview in full screen. Check it out here. The shortcut keys for full screen and exit full screen are Ctrl plus Shift plus F. Let's try it. Hold down the Ctrl and Shift keys, and then hold down the F key. The window goes full screen. Press it again and the window is restored. When using the shortcut, you need to change the key mode to shortcut 1. These are the previews for the videos. Next, let's look at previewing a picture. Click on a picture. Previewing is displayed in the upper left corner of the playback page. There are also two timecodes in the lower left corner of the image. The first timecode is the current time. The second timecode represents the playing time of the image, which can be adjusted. The play button, zoom button, and full screen button are the same as the one shown just now. No more demonstrations here. Next, let's take a look at the audio preview. Click on the audio. Because the audio has no screen. So there is an audio logo on the play page. In the upper left corner of the playback page, there is also a previewing, which shows that the clip type is audio. The first timecode in the lower left corner of the audio shows the current time. The second timecode shows the length of the audio. These buttons are the same as before. The above is a preview of the materials in the library. If we drag and drop a material onto the timeline below, CapCut will automatically open the player panel to preview the material. At this time it is a preview of the entire timeline. What is the difference between the player panel for previewing a single clip and previewing the entire timeline? The same point is that there are also two timecodes in the lower left corner, a play button, a magnifying glass button, and a full screen button. The differences are as follows. The first difference is that the second timecode does not show the length of the material, but the length of the entire timeline. Let's demonstrate. You can see that the current video length is 11 seconds 17. If we add another picture material to the timeline panel here, the length of the video here has become 16 seconds 17. This means that the second timecode does not display the length of a single piece of footage, but the length of the entire timeline. The second difference. When we select this material in the player panel, you will find that the four sides of this material become white. The four corners turned into four white dots. When pressing the white point with the left mouse button, it can be dragged. This allows you to zoom in and out of the material. When we put the mouse on the material, then hold down the left mouse button while moving, you will find that we can move the position of this material. There is a circle below. When we click and hold this circle with the left mouse button, moving the mouse will change the angle of this material. These functions are not available when previewing a single material. The third difference. When we drag the position of this material, you will see a blue line appear. 
So what is this blue line for? It can help us to automatically immobilize there. For example, if you put it here, it will automatically snap to the middle position. Place it below and it will automatically snap to the position aligned with the bottom. What do we do if we want to cancel this line? We can check the shortcut keys. To cancel player alignment, long press Ctrl key. Let's try it. Drag this material. At this time, long press the Ctrl key. Now you can see that the blue line has disappeared. Release the keyboard and the blue line will appear again. You can try it yourself. The fourth difference. When we previewed a single material, we knew we were previewing that material. But when there are multiple materials on the timeline, how should we determine which material to preview now? Well, it's actually based on the pointer here. For example, if this pointer is at this position, then the content previewed in the player panel is about this material. When the pointer is placed here, the preview screen is about this material. The fifth difference. There is a ratio button here. When we previewed a single material before, the ratio was gray and could not be clicked. It is now clickable. Click ratio. It can adjust the proportion of the video. When making a video, you need to set the ratio well. For example, when making YouTube videos, they are usually horizontal screens, and we usually choose a ratio of 16 to 9. If we want to make a vertical video, going to change it to 916, this is commonly used on TikTok. A problem that novices often encounter when making videos is the black borders of the video. After exporting the video, some people will find that there are black borders on the upper and lower sides or the left and right sides of the video. So what are these black borders caused by? In fact, it is because the video material does not fill the playback window. So how to solve it? When footage is added to the timeline panel below, press and hold this white dot. Then stretch it. Let this material fill the entire screen. In this way, there will be no black border problem after exporting the video. That's all about the player panel. Although relatively simple, the content is a bit fragmented.